Failures on the Disney front have been myriad and devastating for a while now, but in my estimation, the true decay began exactly 10 years ago today, May 3rd, 2013. Iron Man 3, a movie with a $200 million budget, and it had a $174.1 million opening weekend. It was on its way to a $1.215 billion box office haul. Now, contrary to what the immediate inclination may be, I'm not going to talk about the plot twist with the Mandarin. I think they had enough narrative wiggle room that they could have backed their way out of that mistake eventually. Nor am I going to talk about how the Mach 42 suit looked as if Iron Man, the character, was bought from Lucasfilm in order and in order to keep the profits, they had to change the appearance by 40%. Nor am I going to talk about how most of the film was Tony Stark bullying a kid. I never understood that criticism because that was the Tony Stark character. I thought the suit was basically succumbing to the law of large numbers, you swing the bat enough times and eventually you strike out, and the suit didn't look good. Nor am I talking about how silly it was that the movie came out in May, but it was a Christmas movie because, you know, Shane Black likes Christmas and Tony Stark throws a jingle bell grenade because, oh my god, isn't that cute? Nor am I talking about how Pepper suddenly becomes a superhero out of nowhere because totes girl power and she ends up being the one who stops the threat because that's not really what happens in the first two movies and these days, well, two out of three ain't bad. Nor am I talking about how this was the Marvel movie that, for me, finally crossed that 51% action and 49% bu silly barrier to become a ham fest. Nor am I talking about the fact that one of the storylines, one of the main storylines, is Tony Stark having PTSD. In my own opinion, the guy went from blowing up a few terrorists in Iron Man 1 to fighting aliens, flying a nuke through a black hole, and being screamed back to life by a giant green man monster just a couple movies later. Being unable to square those circles makes sense and the narrative angle was unique and allowed the character to grow. Nor am I talking about how James Badge Dale is basically playing Johnny Sins playing a superpowered non supervillain. Nor am I talking about how this was the first time I remember Hollywood just giving up on superpowers and saying, hey, let's make them glow and make them real strong. But part of that admission on my behalf is that the plot point of shady and underhanded biopharma undermines the American president with the help of a sleazeball vice president in order to force a bunch of people into injections that essentially makes their heart explode is an interesting study into how the subtext of any text can change over time. Especially when taking into account the fact that the Golden Screens Tony Stark was inspired by Elon Musk, who appeared in the second film. Nor am I talking about... Look, the point is, this is a very flawed movie. It has a ton of problems. And I'm not even going to touch on Jon Favreau's dismissal from the project. The fact is, did it have Tony Stark? Check. Did it have multiple Iron Man suits? Check. Did it have witty banter? Check. Action and explosions? Check. That is good enough to get a pass from me. They can't all be the Dark Knight. They can't all be Logan. They can't all be the original Iron Man. What I'm talking about is that ten years ago, Marvel made the final Iron Man movie.
seemingly in a complete abdication of fiduciary responsibility. Iron Man was popular. Combining action with tech, Iron Man became part of the cultural zeitgeist. You can't buy that type of resonance with your audience. With endless suit iterations and perhaps not a particularly compelling rogues gallery, but a very deep rogues gallery, not to mention his sidekick war machine providing endless suit variations of his own, the Iron Man property is uniquely positioned to be marketable and sell an entire North Atlantic garbage patch of plastic to boys. And it has been 10 years since they made an Iron Man movie. There are fourth graders alive today who were not conceived the last time Tony Stark helmed a solo outing. It's been 10 years. For clarity's sake, it was only eight years, eight years between Joel Schumacher murdering the marketability of Batman with Batman and Robin, and the day Batman Begins was actually in theaters. But for Iron Man, if there was a finished script, and casting was done, and cameras started rolling tomorrow, it would be 2025 or 2026 before another Iron Man movie was in theaters. By all accounts... No such plan exists. So, smart money would push the odds at such a reboot or re-beginning out to at least 2028. A full 20 years from the 2008 theatrical debut of the Iron Man character. In cultural terms, 20 years is an eternity. Again, for reference, it was a little less than 21 years between the July 1978 release of Star Wars A New Hope and the May 1999 release of Star Wars Episode I The Phantom Menace. I was heading into the 8th grade for the Episode I release and, to me, the original Star Wars trilogy was old people stuff and ancient history. Part of the reason I stated, pardon me, part of the reason for Robert Downey Jr.'s stating not wanting to return to the franchise was that he hated the heads-up scenes and the precarious nature by which they were shot. The heads-up scenes being those scenes where Tony Stark is looking through the Iron Man suit and speaking to Jarvis. Also, that he hated wearing the suit. But even by the filming of the third Iron Man movie, very little of the suit had to actually be worn, with most of the work being done in post. And you can't convince me that the heads-up work for a single movie couldn't be done in a couple hours, or just get rid of the effect entirely. Another part of the whispers were Robert Downey Jr.'s price tag, and maybe he was pricing himself out in order to stop doing little kid movies. Neither does this make sense. A $200 million movie in Iron Man 3 made $1.2 million just at the box office. You pay that guy whatever you have to, even if you can only get him for a few weeks of filming, because, surprise, you could build an Iron Man movie around 90% Iron Man and 10% Tony Stark. Besides, name a Robert Downey Jr. movie since that 2013 Iron Man 3, one that's not a Marvel appearance. 2014's The Judge? 2020's Doolittle? You're telling me that Disney let the guy with that CV in the past decade big-time them? No. No, the truth is, Disney and Marvel abandoned the character. A character 
whose brains outweighed his brawns, and thereby could have inspired an entire generation of boys into being tech thinkers, or girls for that matter, a character who could have inspired the next generation of tech engineers in the same way that generations of bodybuilders have sported Superman tattoos. In a very stupid, very, very stupid move by very arrogant executives, Disney abandoned billions of dollars. <laughs>